The other question, what made you choose Colombia mm. over any other Latin countries and why? Well, I was watching other YouTubers to see other YouTube learners, like where they learned and the best places to learn. And, you know, me dijeron que el acento en Colombia es lo más, no sé, neutro, más o menos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. ¿Qué tal mi gente? Welcome to another episode of My World. If this is your first time on my channel, I would like to invite you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notification bell to stay updated with all the latest of video. So guys, we actually have a very special guest on today's episode and I would talk about it, but it was all Shahada's <laughs> idea. So I'm gonna just give her the volante so she can go ahead and tell you guys what we have in store. All right, you guys, so this is somebody that I've been following for quite some time now. I'm not exactly sure how long, um, but a lot of time in my free time, I like to YouTube search people's Spanish learning journey. And I came across Journey to Spanish, that's new for channels. Make sure you guys go check it out. Um, and the thing that I loved about her channel was its authenticity. It was... The rawness. <laughs> the rawness. Yes. Um, and, you know, her just sharing her experience, like, I felt her on a spiritual level and getting to see from where she was from the beginning of her journey um, to where she is now and just seeing her little update videos. And not only that, she actually traveled to Colombia with her son, um, so just to hear about getting him in daycare, finding housing, um, I really enjoyed watching her videos. It wasn't anything like crazy, like editing, but it was just hearing her talk and her experience that really um, brought me to want her bring to bring her on the channel. So I was like, babe, look at this. This is how I feel. Like how she was talking about her, some of her struggles with learning Spanish. Um, so. Then we sent her a message and then she agreed to do an interview and so now we're here. Yes guys, so you know I hope you guys enjoyed this video as we did setting it all up. Um please don't forget to go and show her love also. Mm -hmm. You know, go and big her up. She didn't have to do this but she did it. And the reason why we did it as well is because all of you guys been talking about wanting to move abroad and you know, just living in a Latin country and this and that. You know, me and Shahada, we did it. We had our experience. We shared it with you guys. And no one better to share their experience than someone that you guys can actually relate to. For me, it wasn't as hard because I'm Latino. But for someone that speaks no Spanish and just move into like a Latin country knowing no one... I feel like this would actually speak volume to a lot of you guys. So make sure when you go to her page that you put at the bottom, Nick of Flow sent us here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, hope you guys enjoy the video. So journey to Spanish. Thank you for being a part of this interview. I appreciate, you know, you giving me a little bit of your time to come and share your story with us. Guys, this is... Soy Rebecca de Journey to Spanish. Gracias por tenerme. I know a lot of you guys be having like this idea to be moving to a Latin country. You know, I did it. I had my own experience mm -hmm. and I share it with you guys. And Journey to Spanish, you, Rebecca, you did it as well, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I have a list of questions here that was set up for you today. Um, by the way, for who don't know, as you guys heard already, she do speak Spanish as well. And that's why she named her channel Journey to Spanish. So the first question that I have here for you, Rebecca, is ¿Hace cuánto tiempo has estado aprendiendo español, Rebecca? Empecé a estudiar español hace dos años, tres años, creo en dos, 2018, creo. Okay. The second question would be why you decide to learn Spanish? Mm -hmm. Basically, I'm Puerto Rican, and when you're Puerto Rican and you don't know Spanish, people give you shit. And it's like my family, you know, my brothers, they can speak it. You know, it makes you feel disconnected from your people, from your culture, like you're missing out on something. Okay. The other question would be, do you have any family currently in mm -hmm. Puerto Rico? 
Not that I know. I mean, you know, my father, he passed when I was like a kid and that's the reason why I could never learn. So that's probably why I had the obsession to learn Spanish because I know that if I would have been raised with him, I would have learned it because I know, I guess he didn't even really speak good English. Like Spanish was his main language. I have heard by my brothers that there might be some tias, tios or somebody out there, but we don't know that part of the family. So I'm sure there is, but I don't, I don't know them, you know? The other question, what made you choose Colombia mm. over any other Latin countries and why? Well, I was watching other YouTubers to see other YouTube learners, like where they learned and the best places to learn. And, you know, me dijeron que el acento en Colombia es lo más, no sé, neutro, más o menos. Mm -hmm. Y por esa razón, elegí Colombia and I visited 10 days just by myself. Mm -hmm. Just to see, and I was staying with a family. It's like, you know, you can stay with a local family. It was like, just to kind of get the real feel of everything and whatever. Estaba pensando en mudarme a Puerto Rico también. Oh. Pero, me di <laughs> pero me dijeron que no es, no es barato. Es verdad. Pues cuando nosotros estuvimos en Puerto Rico, nosotros lo sentimos barato porque estábamos aquí. En serio. Pero cuando estás en Puerto Rico y estás trabajando en um, ahí nomás en Puerto Rico y ganando dinero de Puerto Rico, sale uh -huh. caro. Es sí. mejor si tienes un negocio por internet o algo así. Por internet que, está, que, está, que te están pagando desde aquí en los Estados Unidos. Me imagino que también hay um, buenos trabajos, pero lo que uh -huh. me tocó a mí en, la, en, en lo que yo trabajaba no me uh -huh. resultó. ¿En qué estabas trabajando? Pues porque yo estaba trabajando construcción antes de mudarme a Puerto Rico. Y ok, me... pero es buen trabajo, ¿no? Pero cuando me mudé a Puerto Rico, solo estaban pagando a 8.30 la hora. ¡Ah! Exactamente. De estar ganando bien en los Estados Unidos a estar ganando 8 dólares y 30 centavos, yo no podría sobrevivir con eso. No, no, no. Ok, porque tengo unos, uh, unas preguntas para ti también, porque, <risa> no, en serio, porque por muchos años he estado pensando en, en mudarme a Puerto Rico, pero me dijeron muchos, uh, muchas cosas, como no es tan barato, eh, la comida, no es... Pues, lo que podemos hacer, ¿verdad? Como tú estás haciendo una entrevista conmigo, yo puedo hacer una entrevista <ríe> sí. contigo donde tú me entrevistas a mí. Ah, sí, exacto, Pero exacto. Eso. Porque tengo, tengo preguntas para ti también. Ok. La otra pregunta que te quería hacer es, quiero que me digas de tu experiencia cuando estuviste viviendo en Colombia. Realmente mi experiencia fue difícil, pero... Pero, no sé, me enamoré de Colombia y realmente eh, podría haber aprendido más, pero has visto mis videos, tengo un problema de confianza y de, no sé, miedo y ansiedad y todo, pues mm -hmm. es súper difícil. Al principio pensé que estoy viviendo en un país que habla español, voy a aprender todo rápido, pero no es verdad. Necesitas hablar con todo en mm -hmm. un taxi, en la calle. Necesitas, no sé, put yourself in situations that make you uncomfortable. Es you know, no yeah. es, no es like instant. Sentiste que um, aprendiste mucho más cuando estuviste viviendo en Colombia que en Estados Unidos, me imagino. Sí, pero es diferente. Hay maneras diferentes de aprender. Aquí estudio más en libros y cosas así, pero en Colombia no estudié en libros o, era, o nada. Era más in, interacción con, con la gente. Interacción, exacto. Quería saber, the housing and the cost of living, oh. how was it over there? Was it expensive? It's really, really cheap. Like I said, that's one of the reasons, you know, I went with Colombia. I, you know, fell in love with the culture, the people. I'm more of a beach person. I'm more like tropical, you know, like I, I wish that I, you know, I wanted to try to pick somewhere like on the coast or something so mm -hmm. I could just be like under a palm tree or something, you know, <laughs> but I was just, once I looked into it, everybody was like, oh, you know, you'll fall in love with Medellin. And it's like, once you go there, the only risk of going to Medellin is never wanting to come back. Like, yeah. you know, and I'm like, oh shit. Now I know why they said that. Once I went there, I'm like, Um, I mean, we had a two bedroom at one point and we were paying $220 for a two bedroom. Wow. $220. But now another thing, 
you know, a lot of like, you know, people that move there, like they'll be like in the gringo area. It'll be like a high rises and stuff. And it will look totally different than like the regular areas. I'm more of the type, like I was like in the barrio, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Making it feel like home for real. Right. Like I was just like, if I'm doing this, I'm doing this shit all the way. Like I'm, you know, you, wanna be, you, wanna we be got ro- you got roosters over here. You got the, you know, you got the tortilla man over here. You got the, you know what I'm saying? No, the arepa man. <laughs> Yeah, that's you funny. know, yeah. so I was just like, you know, that's why it was that price. Like I read in other groups, you know, those Facebook groups, stuff like that. You know, people saying that they're paying like a thousand US dollars and stuff like that. Mm. Like if you really want to go there and try to act like you're like in the United States, like you can't pay a thousand or more. But if you, you know, don't have any problem with just integrating into like a regular neighborhood, um, <clears throat> Then, no, but that that then, yeah, you, well, this is something that I want to let a lot of people don't know as well. People that mm-hmm. try to go and live in other countries, right? Then go and try mm-hmm. to live the same lifestyle as the United States, and that is why people be watching them. You get me? You want to try yeah. to fit in. You don't want to try to overdo it because you gotta remember, mm-hmm. like you bring in a whole different lifestyle over their lifestyle that people most people is not used to. That yeah. would draw a lot of attention to, to you personally or to whoever it may be. Get me? It's true. Especially when you're American. As Latin countries, mm-hmm. you are all Americans like they are rich and this and mm-hmm. the other. You know, that can that can be mm-hmm. risky. In Colombia, the big thing is, you know, people stealing cell phones, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because, you know, the electronics there are so expensive. People always told me, don't walk around with your cell phone, put all your stuff away, you know, everything. And like one month before I left Medellin, I got pickpocketed from my cell phone when I was in the gringo area. And the thing is, is when you're in the area to where it's a lot of like Americans, mm-hmm. right? That's where they, that's where they try to get people. Like when I was in my, my little barrio or whatever, and I'm walking around. Yeah, I probably stood out. They probably knew I wasn't from there, but I wasn't a target. But as soon as, you know, you go into an area like, you know, El Centro or something. Yeah, like you said, you know, you don't want to flash around your stuff. La otra pregunta es, ¿cómo era la experiencia para tu hijo? Uf, creo que para él eh, fue difícil porque... He was thinking that the kids were making fun of him sometimes, you know, wow. because they had a language barrier. You know, I felt bad, you know, like mom guilt, like, oh, I'm bringing you into the situation. You don't know anybody. But you know how they say that kids catch on mm-hmm. good with learning and their ear because he was speaking Spanish when he was there and his accent was like way better than mine. Like he sounded like he was like a native, like, you know, they hear and they have a gift, you know, their mind is still developing. Exactly. So he was like, he would surprise me sometimes with his Spanish, but like, I, you know, I wanted to stay there longer and I thought that we were going to come back and he would be like fluent or something. But now he's just like, mom, why are you always talking Spanish? Ah." You know, (laughs) now he's annoyed by it because he had to go there, not understand people. Right. And, you know, but also for kids, if anybody's thinking about, you know, maybe traveling there, you know, until you have a kid, I mean, it might be hard for kids, but like, you know, certain things are just universal. You know what I mean? They would be mm-hmm. running around playing. You don't really need to know what each other's saying to play and have a good time. You know, he'd be at the park or at school playing. Playing's universal, so they will figure it out, but sometimes you feel way. bad. Okay. Was it hard finding school for him? Well, not really. I mean, he was in more like a daycare. It wasn't too hard, but I had to find one that was okay and that had a good environment for somebody who didn't speak the language. So they had to be understanding and patient. Um, But no, it's not hard to find daycares. Um, It's also cheap. I think it was like, I don't know, maybe it was like 30 or $40 a month or something. It was like super cheap. But then once they get school age, for the other moms that I knew there, it is kind of hard because I guess the the schools are not that good. So a lot of people were trying to put their kids in uh, the private and I guess they have wait lists that are like over a year long um, if you if you want to get your kid in private school. But I mean, you know, it depends what you want, but it's no, like there's public schools, there's a lot of daycares. Entiendo. ¿Hiciste algún, algunos amigos cuando estuviste viviendo ahí y aún hablas con ellos? Básicamente mi profesora era mi mejor amiga. No mantienen comunicación también. 
Sí, todavía tengo clases eh, con ella por Skype. Y básicamente ella y sus amigos, y sus amigos. ¿Por qué te veniste para atrás mm -hmm. y regresarías nuevamente a vivir en Colombia? La razón que regresamos es que tuvimos problemas con eh, la visa de Salomón, mi hijo. Y realmente no me di cuenta que Colombia es lo más estricto en Sudamérica en general. Y la razón que no podía obtener eh, visa de Salomón es que ellos eh, querían permiso de su papá. Y, like, we don't have a good relationship. Like, they wanted him to go to some embassy and sign papers and all this stuff. So that's one thing to keep in mind, like, if anybody, you know, is wanted to move there. Like, there's, you know, Mexico and other places that it's, it's very easy to, like, immigrate there. But with Colombia, like, oh, my God. They wanted, you know, papers that were, you know, within the first, that were issued within 30 days, that had special stamps, permisos, um, and all this stuff. It was impossible to get it, impossible. So, so would you go back to live? Probably, or maybe I might pick another place. I don't know, because, <laughs> nah, because I don't know how I'm gonna get the permission, right, and have his dad sign off on all this stuff. So that make it a little bit more difficult. Uh, right. I mean, you can go there and let your papers run out, but like, I don't want problems. Yeah, you don't recommend. I don't recommend that to no one. Absolutely. Right. No. Because Definitely. that's what we did with uh, my son. That's what I did with my son. Is like I just let his thing expire, and I I still have a visa, a Colombian visa, actually. But uh, my son, he um, yeah, he was expired. I think four or five months. So we had to go to migración the day before leaving, and it was like a lot. It was a lot of money. Like uh, it was like five hundred dollars or something. Wow, that's that is a lot. And if you don't pay it and you leave, uh, you get banned for life. Yeah, I had to pay because I'm like, what if I want to visit again with my son? And when yeah, he goes yeah. to try to enter, they're gonna be like, uh-uh, there's something on his case. Yeah, definitely I understand. Okay. So, ¿Cuántas veces tomas lecciones de español? Cuando estuve en Colombia, tomaba clases mm, lunes a viernes, eh, dos horas por día. Y ahorita, dos horas por semana. Okay. No mucho. ¿Hay alguna razón por eso? No, realmente no. Estoy tratando de conversar con mis vecinos, con mis conductores, mm -hmm. con, con personas en, en las tiendas y todo, porque es más, es una forma más natural. Todos mis vecinos son mexicanos, pero uf, pensé que el acento de, me, eh, de México era fácil, pero en Chicago ellos hablan súper diferente y no sé, súper difícil <risa> entenderlos. Así, uf. ¿Qué te inspiró? a empezar mm. un canal de YouTube. No sé, hace dos años, tres años, estaba buscando inspiración eh, y encontré la página de AMI. Ok, siempre AMI. Ok. Um, <risa> y, y es gracioso porque mi primera vez que, que tomó clases de español fue con AMI. Y estaba mirando eh, sus videos y después de esto encontré mucho, mucho más canales de YouTube y estaba mirando personas eh, viviendo en otros países y, y me sentí, oh, wow, it's really possible, you know? What are your next steps on your Spanish learning journey? I'm going to try to do more videos, like, you know, say if I'm in an Uber or if I'm having conversations with people, because then it's going to make me go out of my comfort zone. It's also going to give me more content to put on my channel. And also it's going to help me just, you know, jump in there and just train my ear. Because now that I've been out of Colombia for so long, at first my issue was talking. Now I can, you know, I can say basically what I want to say, but now my ear is not trained. So now I'm like, great, now I can say what I want to say, but now I don't know what you said. So <laughs> well, I can't say nothing to you, you know? So now I need to boost up. I probably need to just do more input. Like, you know, all my shows that I like to watch, I need to find new shows in Spanish, um, train my ear to be able to hear better. Because sometimes, you know, if you get tripped up, you know, you're like, oh shit, yeah. you know? And then it's like, it yeah. kind of puts a hope. So journey to Spanish, Rebecca, I want to thank you once more again and see ya. Life too fly to be stressing. Stressing.
Don't trouble away and take your blessing. Every day is a new lesson. I'm not perfect, but I am progressing. Always shoot my shot, they step up, then I fade away. Music like the only how to get me through the day.